So the October 2023 LSAT is coming up next week. And although I'm not taking it because I, I already went through that part of my law school journey, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I believe that my advice, my experiences, my mistakes along the way will be helpful to those who are looking to go into law school and they are in need of guidance. First off, I want to say that the LSAT is the most important part of your law school application. There is no sugarcoating it. You could be the best student with the highest GPA. You could also be phenomenal when it comes to how you conduct yourself academically, that you're involved with extracurriculars. But if your LSAT score is not high enough, depending on the school, each school sort of has its own minimum for most applicants. And unless you're really extraordinary, if you don't get that certain LSAT score that you want for your school, they're just straight up either going to deny you or they're not gonna give you any financial help. So getting over this hurdle is really, really important for law school applicants. Now, each applicant kind of needs to decide what their goal is. If you're gonna to go to Harvard or if you wanna to go to Georgetown or Yale or Stanford, obviously you have a much higher bar and a much higher threshold. There's almost no room for error on this test versus if you want to go to a decently ranked public university or a decently ranked private university you have a little bit more flexibility and you don't have to be perfect but you could be but you do have to be pretty damn good now me i took the lsat four times i took it um october 2021 it's about to be two years since i took the lsat for the first time i took it august 2022 November 2022, and most recently, August 2023. So although it's been about a month or two months since I last studied for the LSAT, I will say that I think my advice is still pretty potent and I wanna make this video while this knowledge is still fresh. The title of the video is how to get a 165 plus on the LSAT. And I don't want you guys to think I'm full of crap, that I'm lying, I'm giving you guys the proof. This was, uh, all four instances of my uh, test taking session. Now, the reason why I share this to you guys is because I really do believe in transparency and I also want you guys to see that me personally, I'm not perfect, that I had to make improvements along the way and that this journey took me two years. First, I'll start off with when I began studying and the mistakes I made along the way. You have to find the right resource that works for you and the right studying routine that works for you. Because I kind of went with each test session, I went with a different sort of, um, how do I say this? Uh, material guide, a different website. And for the first test sessions, I used a little bit of the Princeton Review Book. They're great for AP and SAT, not great for LSAT. I used Khan Academy the first time, great for, L great for SAT, but not for LSAT. And then um, for my second test session, I used Seven Sage. They were better, they had more interactive videos, but studying on your own for this test, unless you're really, really capable, is just something that is kind of hard to do. Now for my third test session, I will say that I did get a prep course called JD Genius. And um, it was a good prep course. I think the issue for me was that I really didn't, um, how do I say this? I really didn't put it in as many hours as I could have. And that could be said for the first, for those first three test sessions, because I was doing school, I was working, I was doing all these things and not really dedicating soul time to the LSAT where I could just worry about nothing else except taking the LSAT. And I think that kind of did me in for the first three times. There's a lot of debate and discussion about LSAT prep courses. My opinion, it helps if you need improvement on the logic games if you're looking for a teacher who can teach you how to do the logic games the little scribbly lines but if you really don't need much improvement on the logic games if there isn't that much room to grow honestly and this might be a controversial take but i don't think the lsat prep courses are, are worth it they're great for the logic games but for everything else it's it's decent it's fine pretty much this fourth test session for me was all or nothing and for those of you who aren't aware you get five times to take the lsat before you're cut off for five years. And so that rule might change, but within the current predicament, I made the best choice I could and I pretty much put it on this fourth test session. So I kinda wanna show you my study hours just so you can see. Uh, basically what you have here is this is the first time October 2021. Uh, I put in 80 hours for a month and a half, which was decent, but nothing great. Uh, the second time I took the ELSA, I put, oh, sorry, yeah. The second time I took the ELSA, I put in a little bit more hours, but really nothing spectacular either. And then the third time, which ironically was the time that I put in 
the most was the, the one I did the least amount of hours for for that test session, it was 56 hours, but the thing is I had been studying for so long and I had the prep course and I was paying, and I attended all the classes. So this number you're seeing doesn't include the hours I spent on Tuesdays and Thursdays on that LSAT prep course, which if you add that, it was probably more like 120 hours, something like that within that, pol within that ballpark. But basically, I kinda wanna start off here because as you can see, this is pretty much the longest um, w study sheet and I'll, I'll get to the importance of a, of a log later, but basically, uh, first thing is first, what changed within my study routine? Because I'm showing you that I put in more hours, right? But if you don't change up how you study, it's really not gonna, gonna work. It doesn't matter if you put in more hours, if you're doing something incorrectly or inefficiently, that's gonna hurt you. So I'll show you what I did. Basically, I really started studying towards the end of March, beginning of April, as you could see here, and I kept a uh, pretty much more or less a uh, consistent flow and so this was my study routine for the fourth time and I would recommend this uh, study pattern so on let's just start off on Mondays because it's simple all right so Monday I would do three uh, three logic game sections so each lot there's four logic games within each section I would do it for each practice test so this was the first time I did it I did uh, the logic game for PT1 PT2 PT3 right and then on Tuesday, what I would do is I would do three sections of a logical reasoning, right? And that would mean just like not the whole thing for each practice test, so basically just one, two, three logical reasoning sections. And then Wednesday, three reading comprehensions. Now, as the test went on, obviously I took breaks. Like there was some times where I didn't study for a week or two weeks because I still had school. I was I still had things to do. But obviously I, I, I studied more. And the point of me to say this is that you can adjust this to your needs. I took the August 2023 LSAT with the mindset that I really needed to improve my logic games. And that's what I think did me wrong the third time. I would have done better than a 156 if I had done better on the logic game section. That one was, in my estimation, my worst one. Uh, so as the test, as the time became shorter, I basically, here's how things broke down. And if I, I kind of did this year, I did all 93 logic games that were available. Every logic game that was available, I did it. I did 43 uh, uh, logical reasoning practice test sections. And then for reading comprehension was the least amount. I did 30, but basically the way I was able to improve with um, everything across the board uh, came down to this. Logic games, I think doing the LSAT prep course really helped me learn the logic game. So I would recommend if you really suck at logic games, taking a good LSAT prep course uh, to improve on it. The one I took was uh, JD Genius and I would recommend it just for that. And then for logical reasoning and reading comprehension, and I kind of view these as the same, but for logical reasoning specifically, because there's a question with uh, a stimulus and then five multiple choice answers, what I would recommend is don't read the pat read the stimulus first, read that part first. So on the paper, it's gonna, on if you ever print out your LSAT papers, it's gonna be top bottom, but if you take the test, it's gonna be stimulus here and then question here. Don't look at the question, read the stimulus first. Focus on the stimulus. That's the advice that I got on my prep course and I really, really recommend it. And don't, if you need to go back to it, read it again, but basically you wanna break down that little stimulus, sort of get the, understand what's the argument being made, if there is an argument being made, understand the conclusion, the supporting evidence, understand, try to think of any potential uh, gaps in logic Try to think of um, what could be true or what must be true and just sort of go into the question from there and I promise you that I hope that will help you out with 80% of the questions in logical reasoning. Now reading comprehension, people say, um, and LSAT experts say that this is the one where, you, oh, you can improve on it, you can improve on it. And I personally think that that's a massive cop out. The way I improved on my reading, co reading comprehension was I started reading books on various topics, um, on finance, on psychology, sociology, history, uh, science, just a bunch of different topics that not, that not, I wasn't reading because, oh, I'm gonna read for the LSAT. No, 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 I was reading because I genuinely wanted to read and I genuinely wanted to learn uh, new topics. 
But because I did that and I kind of went into the LSAT having read books that were 400, uh, 500 pages, to me, like a four to five paragraph essay was nothing. And I think this generation specifically has a shorter attention span. So the people taking the LSAT aren't really used to reading more than, I don't know, a Wikipedia article worth. So when you get these, when you get these passages, it's a little bit intimidating. But trust me, once you start reading and, and, and building that good habit of just gaining knowledge, um, you're, you're going to find these passages very, very uh, doable, and you're going to see an improvement. Now, I will say that I personally don't like non sorry, I personally don't like fiction books. For this strategy to work, you have to do nonfiction, all right? Because all the LSAT passages, regardless of topic, are are nonfiction. Maybe they're hypotheticals, legal hypotheticals, but still, they're based in reality. So don't read Harry Potter and think, oh, I'm gonna get a, a 175 on the LSAT. No, no, you have to read nonfiction books for this advice to work. Improvement takes time. And you could say, oh, Alex, you're full of shit. Well, this is all the the logic that this is all the <laughs> the work I did for four and a half months leading up to this LSAT. So I tell you guys this because I really do believe that um, if you want to go into law school, uh, the LSAT doesn't really determine your success as a lawyer. Like there are people who didn't necessarily get the best LSAT scores, but they have the right connections. They worked hard and they were able to build themselves up. But what I'm trying to say is that regardless of your personal trajectory, right? Let's say there were two versions of you, right? As a law school applicant, there was a version that uh, didn't get the LSAT score that they wanted to go to the school that they wanted to get the, the scholarship that they wanted versus the one who did. Even though both of them study equally hard and equally rigorously, you're gonna wanna take the version that has the higher LSAT score. Make sacrifices, all right? And what I mean by that is don't half, don't half ass the LSAT. Don't do a half measure. All right. Because at the end of the day, if you are somebody who really does want to go to law school, you're going to have to treat the LSAT like a job at one point. If you want to get the score that you want, if you want to get a 165 or above, that's what you had to do for the first three times I took the test. I didn't really treat it like a job. I was always doing other things and I did okay. Right. But not what I knew I was capable of. Um, instead of, Oh, let's go out to the club tonight. Sorry, I can't. I have the LSAT. Oh, let's go on this trip to Europe. Sorry, I can't. And that's literally what happened to me. Like there were so many opportunity, opportunities for me to do things that I just said no to because I was in my house, I was studying, and I was doing what I needed to do. And so you're going to want to keep that in mind when you're studying for the LSAT. You're going to want to build that routine that you can maintain. And you want to have a log and I almost forgot to mention this the log is so that you can hold yourself accountable and you can look back and at the time when i wasn't doing what i needed to do and at the time when i wasn't getting the lsat score that i i wanted for me i wanted like a 160 just so i could uh, get into decent schools with decent scholarship offers looking back only studying 50 something hours or 70 hours it wasn't enough to get the 160 plus that i oh so desired so you want to have that log to hold yourself accountable to track the total number of hours and minutes you study within each particular day. For practice tests, you have to use lawhub.com. Pretty much the user interface is almost identical to the one you're going to see on the day of the LSAT. And so it's going to be a digital format since the LSAT is computer. Uh, lawhub is where all the practice tests are available, uh, starting with um, LSAT test 20 and beyond. So use that to take your practice tests. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you do have any more LSAT questions, if there's something that you feel like I didn't properly cover in this video, uh, just write a comment down there and I'll be glad uh, to answer uh, any of your questions and I'll try my best to do so. To those who are taking the LSAT in the future or they're taking it as soon as uh, next week, uh, good luck.